Hello again fellow Minecraftians and welcome to another tutorial by me, Lost. Uh, this one on redstone energy cells and redstone energy conduits. Now these are the be all and end all top tier MJ storage and transport items. Um, so much so in fact that I personally don't even use any pipes at all. All the basic machinery I use I power directly by an engine until I'm able to produce these because these are awesome. Um, you are going to need, well they are quite expensive relatively um, but not difficult to make. The full recipe is in NEI. I won't bother uh, showing you how to build them because if you don't know how to use NEI um, well you're beyond help I think but you will need some basic infrastructure and by basic I mean well everything. Um, certainly most most if not yeah most of the machines that uh, thermal expansion have to offer you will need a pulverizer for obviously pulverizing your ores but also to pulverize obsidian uh, you will need a furnace for cooking up your ores obviously you will not need a sawmill because no one needs a sawmill you will definitely be using the induction smelter you'll be using this to make uh, electrum and hardened glass you will also be needing a magma crucible for melting redstone and a liquid transposer for filling the empty energy cells and the empty energy conduits with liquid redstone. Uh, you will not need that. Okay, uh, well let's start off basically with the redstone energy conduit. There we go, it's quite simple. This is basically uh, wiring for Minecraft jewels. Unlike pipes, which uh, tend to explode or break easily, I mean, how many times have you been uh, rearranging things inside your base and accidentally knocked out some fiberglass cable or smashed loads of pipes? It's very, very easy to do such a thing. But these have take that into account, and you can pick them up with a pick, but as you can see, they, it's by no means an easy task, so you aren't going to be breaking them by accident, which is a plus in itself. However, if you get a crescent hammer or a build craft wrench, just uh, sneak and right click, so shift and right click, they will automatically, nice and easy, in one, come off. Nice and simple. Which I think is an absolutely fantastic design. Uh, well, where do we start? I guess with the energy cell. Here we have a redstone energy cell. Now it's completely empty, as you can see, which is how it starts. Now the interface, you've got your central uh, bit there, which t it indicates how much energy is actually stored, in this case none. Now on this side you have the maximum input. Now you can adjust these, you can lower it or uh, raise it. I don't know why you would lower your maximum input down, because surely you'd want them to charge as fast as possible. Now your maximum output, you may want to restrict how fast, say, quarries are running. I believe the new buildcraft quarries run can run up to 100 Minecraft jewels per tick, which is absurdly fast. Um, but perhaps, oh, I don't know, for whatever reason, maybe you don't want your energy to run out so fast, so you could adjust it down to run at half speed or quarter speed. Now, with these in, uh, adjustment increments, if you left click, like so, either way, it will adjust by five. If you right click, it will adjust only by one. So you can fine tune these to output exactly how much you want. Again, you can uh, fine tune how much you want them to, to get in, how much the input is. Um, but I, again, I don't know why you would want to. I'm sure someone watching this video will go, oh, oh, well, you know, an amazing idea I've got requires you having a slow input. But whoever you are, you are a douchebag, and I do not wish to know your silly idea. I like my batteries to charge fast in real life. I like my batteries in game to charge fast. Uh, and that's how it works. So yeah, this is your storage device and it will hold 600,000 Minecraft jewels. Now end game, that isn't actually going to be a lot and you may well end up with a huge battery of these guys. Um, I know I have it on a Minecraft server, I have about 50 of these. Um, but then, you know, I run uh, 15 to 20 quarries at a time making, f you know, I'm saving up for fusion reactors and stuff. We're, you know, we're talking massive, massive resource and energy usage here. Uh, plus, you obviously, you've got your um, all your various Greg Tech goodies. So, 
but I digress. Uh, this this tutorial is aimed at the Tekit new Tekit mod pack. So yeah, anyway, uh, you see here, you have an arrow. Now you'll have these arrows on machines. In fact, if I collect, if I get a machine quickly, uh, oh, spelt that wrong. Powered furnaces. There we go. Grab a couple of powered furnaces. Place them down. There we go. Oh. Again, you see the machines, they have little arrows. Now, as you see the little arrow shape, you've got blue at the back, and you've got sort of a diagonal there. Well, it's hard to do with a mouse, actually. But yeah, um, this adjusts whether or not it's receiving power. Now, it's currently set like the arrow is pointing into the machine, so it is receiving power. If you right click with the crescent tool, a uh, crescent crescent hammer, sorry, brain fart, you'll see the arrow has reversed, so it's now pointing out, so that machine is not getting any power. Um, well, they shouldn't have any power anyway, yet, because there's obviously no power in this system. So yeah, the arrows are that simple. Again, with these, see the storage cell <coughs> is set to power in, so it's set to charge up. If it was already full, you could adjust that so that it's set to power out. Now, the only problem I have found personally with the energy conduit and this setting is that if you have things close together, so say we had a, we have a full energy cell there, and we have uh, I don't actually have an empty one on me. One moment. There we go, an empty one. <clears throat> so we'll pop an empty one there. Right, they're both set to input into them. But if I was to change the direction, because I want this one, because it's full, to pump out, you see they both changed. So now they're both pumping out, so the energy will not go from that one into this one because you set the actual individual uh, piece of conduit itself to whether it's going in or out. So you will have to sort of bear that in mind when you're setting up your spacings of, of things and uh, stuff like that. But it is relatively simple. Again, with the energy cells, um, you can mine them up. I mean, if you look at this, he's got a bit of... Well, he's, he's, draining energy into those machines uh, but if you were to just mine it up you will get it back but as you saw there it's now empty which is absolutely bloody useless but if as you see it's got its storage in there now if you right clicked it and picked it up you see like the other one that's in my inventory that one's full this is the one I just picked up it is. It still holds its charge. So if you right click, if you sneak and click to pick things up, A, you don't have to uh, break it, but if you don't break it, you will maintain the energy that's stored inside it, which uh, leaves you open. Basically, they are portable batteries, um, which is absolutely bloody fantastic. Now, charging the cells, let's have a look. So he's got a little bit of power and he's set to charge. Now, if you chuck engines down against this, instead of pipe, much like my um, engine in the engine tutorial, I showed you the pipes. Obviously, you don't need any wooden uh, pipes in this point. But anywhere you chuck these engines, oh, they will connect. They don't automatically point in the right direction. I'm not sure why. I always thought they did. But quick right click or two, and you get them facing in the right direction. Now again with the arrows, even with the arrows facing in the wrong direction, they will charge, they will send energy through, but I think it's only about half power. So right click on the conduit to change it. What? Change, damn you. Oh, I just noticed something new. One moment. No, nope. I thought... Uh, because normally you would uh, click on the central marker, but it wasn't working. And then I realised that if you clicked on there, it changed. I thought uh, it might, King Lengren might have updated it so that they changed individually, but they don't. Uh, just like the uh, hitbox has moved. I'm not used to that. I'm used to uh, the thermal expansion from 1.4.7 uh, release. Uh, so yeah, you get all your things ready like that, like so. Chuck a bit of lava in them. So
So you can have huge machine rooms uh, with uh, combustion engines, magmatics or steam engines, even the Stirling engines if you're terribly desperate. But you can use these and just have them in a line. In fact, you could have, uh, I'm sure you could come up with some cool space saving designs, but you could have some pretty uh, impressive and massive storage or energy production rooms using the redstone conduits, charging multiples of these. As you can see there, he's charging up nicely, plenty quickly. And again, if you've got that many engines, you're going to fill up a 600,000 uh, joule storage device pretty quickly. Let me make this daytime. But yeah, the redstone energy uh, cells and conduits are by far my favourite. Um, just to give you an example, if I grab myself a quarry, there we go. Uh, you know, an example of how good at being batteries they are. I mean, this is only a super flat well, so it's only about three blocks deep. But if I was to chuck a fully charged one, no, neither one are fully charged, never mind. But if you chuck it down straight next to a machine, it could be a builder, it could be a filler, you know, any 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 machine or uh, whatever that takes Minecraft jewels, slam it down right next to it, and immediately it's off. And if we set it to output at 100 Minecraft jewels per tick, you will see just how fast the new quarries are and how good at powering these are. Now, while this is running off in the wilderness somewhere, you could have 10, 20, 30 of these recharging back at home in a, in a uh, you know, in your energy room. Look at that. This does make for some purely beastly uh, builds and mining operations. However, it is very loud. So, shut up. There we go. Yep, so as I said, your redstone energy cells are essentially batteries that hold an awful lot of uh, MJ. Now, from uh, a standard, you know, an average height in the Minecraft world, so not from the top of a mountain, but if you're a, a Y50, Y60, somewhere around there, a, 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 st a single quarry just placed down at this size, it will hit uh, bedrock with two energy cells and two energy cells alone. That's all it would take. They are amazing. I cannot sing their praises enough. Be damned, pipes. We don't like you. Everybody should be using these. Uh, well, I hope you found this helpful, guys. Um, much love to the redstone conduits. Have fun.